My name is Jenna Yango Leonard, and I'm the foundation coordinator. And it is my privilege and pleasure today to uh, be hosting you all here at our webinar today, Coffee with Adele. Um, and I guess we'll just jump right into it. So before we get uh, started, I will just do a quick land acknowledgement here. So as we start, I'd like to acknowledge that I come to you from Toronto here at the United Church of Canada Foundation, United Church of Canada General Council offices. And these are the traditional lands of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, excuse me, the Nishnabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. One of the things that I am doing is learning what I can about these various treaties so that I can understand the history and intent of what was supposed to happen around the caretaking of this land. So I would also invite you to think about where you are and what that means for you and what that has meant over time. <laughs> so as I mentioned, my name is Jenna and I'm the coordinator here at the foundation. <laughs> and a couple of housekeeping pieces uh, as we get started here. This webinar is being recorded and we will send out a link directly to your emails once it's available. And in terms of questions, um, we don't have time today for a formal Q&A session, but we would invite you to share your thoughts and comments in the chat function as we move forward. And if questions occur, we'll do our best to address what we can uh, given the time and re relevancy. And just a reminder to keep comments kind and respectful. Um, inappropriate comments are gonna be deleted and they will be muted if we have any issues, but I hope we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, and yeah, so as we jump into it, today is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, which is March 21st. And we hope that this webinar today serves as a platform to spotlight anti-racist action and to engage in the ongoing discussions and efforts to dismantle racism in all of its forms. Here at the foundation, we're committed to becoming an anti-racist organization and with anti-racism being one of our four guiding priority areas. We acknowledge that there is a lot of work to be done, but we commit ourselves to continuing in training, discussion, and revision of processes, procedures, and policies. And today we're happy and excited to be starting um, our new series. Uh, this is the launch of our Coffee with webinar series, which offers an inside look at the impactful work of various different movers and shakers across the United Church. And we're excited to be kicking this series off by welcoming Adele Halliday as our inaugural guest and to delve into her insights on the ongoing efforts towards racial justice within and beyond our own church community. So Adele Halliday is the anti-racism and equity lead at the General Council Office of the United Church of Canada. She's experienced in anti-racism education as an anti-racism educator, workshop leader, and an award-winning writer. And Adele has been engaged in anti-oppression work with churches in Canada and beyond for many years. She is currently the co-moderator of the World Council of Churches Reference Group on Overcoming Racism and Xenophobia, and she loves teaching, preaching, and leading people in creative processes of discovery, and she lives in Toronto. So with that introduction, I'd like to uh, call Adele forward, and um, Adele, our first question to you is, looking at this webinar, we've called it Building on Our History, and I'd love for you to share uh, some information on what is some of the history of the church's anti-racism? Thank you, Jenna, and hello, everyone, and greetings to you on this, the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. It's good to be here. Uh, so a little bit about the history. Um, I, I think it would be helpful to name and rename that the Church the United Church of Canada's commitment to becoming an anti-racist denomination, which was made in 2020. And Jenna has already noted the Foundation's also commitment to becoming an anti-racist organization. Um, but of course, there's a history that goes back long before 2020, long before four years ago. Um, so just as an example, the United Church has an anti-racism policy that was noted in the year 2000, so 24 years ago, uh, almost a lifetime ago. Um, and that it names four areas of work, uh, organized for full participation, uh, organized for diversity, act justly, and speak to the world. There's been um, work done in terms of the commitment to becoming an intercultural church that was made in the year 2006. 
There, um, there's been more than one apology to Indigenous peoples. There's been the calls to the church from the caretakers of our Indigenous circle, um, a statement that Black Lives Matter to the Native Church. Um, so there's been lots of policies and statements, and I could go on and on about those. But I think what's particularly important to name is that um, it has been the work of active ethnocultural networks um, and Indigenous leaders and allies and many people across the church um, who have been calling the whole church to account on this anti-racism work. And this has been going on for decades. Um, and there's been lots of work uh, happening in local churches and local contexts. So in some ways, I would want to name that our church's history is a people's history. It's shaped by people, <laughs> people across the church who have been continuing calling the church to do and be better and to do more, to name where our gaps are and to stretch and call us collectively to further our commitment to racial justice in multiple ways. I wonder if it might also be helpful to name um, that this history, you know, I'm here speaking today, but I come from a long line of people who did lots of work long before me, uh, lots of people who worked at the general counsel office who were leads for racial justice work, anti-racism work. So I also wanted to name them as part of this history. Um, it happens to be that they're all racialized women um, and many of whom, you know, did this work at great personal sacrifice to themselves. You know, it's, it's hard work, <laughs> it's very hard work. So I'm just naming them as part of this history and the continued journey. This work will continue long after me. And so it's a continuum. So some of the people, uh, staff people who would be helpful to name, um, Omega Bula, Kimiwiri Kai, Wen and Ng, Michiko Baontai, and Alcris Lamonji. So I'm thankful for their work, their collective work. They too are part of this work on a people's history and have worked alongside many other staff in regions, locally, um, people across the church. So it's all of our work collectively who have shaped us to be where we are now. And it will take all of us collectively to continue to shape where we are going in the future. Yeah, and such a good reminder to remember those who came before and those are who are working simultaneously that does take that collective effort of the church um, to approach the work of anti-racism. Um, so what are some of the different communities of faith or what are the different communities of faith doing about anti-racism within their own local contexts right now? Yeah, thanks. A, that's a, a great question. Um, so last year we actually made a little video that talked about this. So, uh, so the question that we invited people to think about was um, was this: the United Church of Canada made a commitment to becoming an anti-racist denomination. So, what has this meant to your community of faith or network? And then people responded, and um, there's a little video. So, I wonder if we can watch the video now. focused on education and community building. We conducted a congregational survey. So we have a right relations team. We've um, worked with uh, Saskatoon Police Services. Uh, we worked with real estate agents. Uh, we worked with people with lived experiences. We have joined in um, anti-racism walks and walks for uh, reconciliation Saskatoon. We hosted during the winter, some monthly learning events called Ally is a Verb. My ministry is to look at social justice issues, to look at uh, MMIW uh, initiatives, as well as um, Every Child Matters. It's a communal journey, and I just want to, I want to be on that journey with my congregation. We are not going to undo hundreds of years of you know, colonialism and racism and oppression in five, 10 or even 30 years. But I, I always say it's like water on a stone, we have to chip away. And so as we are exhausted and dispirited and maybe depressed by some of the things we see happening around us, I think we also need to take time to recognize the achievements that there are. L'Église, oh, le combat que nous entendons sous le cycle, sous l'appellation l'Église unie antiraciste, est pour moi une reconnaissance 
que nous avons un problème de racisme dans l'Église, mais que l'Église a pris conscience du problème. So, thank you for that uh, commitment to being an anti-racist denomination. It's long work, it's hard work, but it's um, heartening to, to know that with the, that our church is aligned and we are aligned with the denomination. It does help and it gives courage, right? To be able to say that the denomination has made this declaration and let's talk about it. Let's talk about what it means. So it's necessary work. It's not easy work and it requires commitment and fortitude. <laughs> So thanks for showing the video. Uh, hopefully it, it serves as some inspiration, um, some ideas for continued action, but what people are already doing, there's already amazing work happening in lots of places from coast to coast to coast. So um, some ideas from people. Thank you. Yeah, uh, certainly not easy work. And I, I loved that uh, quote, um, we're not gonna dismantle colonialism in 20 to 30 years, but it's like water on a stone. So we've all got to, uh, get our hands in there and start start that flow. Um, so Adele, so, some churches might still be wondering, where do we start with anti-racism work? Yes, thanks. So where do we start? Um, one suggestion might be to start by assessing where you are. What's already happening? So for example, is there already work happening in your local context on right relations? Um, is there has there been a focus on Asian Heritage Month? Has there been some exploration of Black History Month in worship? Um, if any or all of those are happening, great. Uh, how might those be expanded? How might they be deepened? How might there be exploration at other times of the year? Um, and then maybe to think about, okay, well, based on where you are, what else might be needed? If you think about your own congregation, is it education? Do people want to learn more? Is it building relationships with diverse communities? Is it forming an anti-racism committee to do some of that work or to deepen that work or continue the work? Um, maybe it's a theological exploration or maybe it's a deep dive into the history of the work or hearing about what other churches are doing. Or maybe it's a Bible study or preaching or focus on worship or thinking of particular actions and advocacy that can be done. So there's lots of ways or places to start um, or to continue work that's already been happening. Uh, but it may be helpful to start with assessing kind of what's already happening, where are things at, and what do you think would help move or encourage or engage the congregation more? And in many of these cases, we have resources to support some of these efforts. So we'll talk, I think we'll have some time to talk about resources later as well. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that we don't always need to reinvent the wheel, that we can look around at the good work that's already being done around us as the same time as assessing our own uh, unique community needs and uh, placement as well. So that's that's great. Thank you. Um, so that's kind of, you've shared a little bit about what uh, local congregations are doing, but where, um, what about the national church? What are some of the ways that National Church has been engaging with anti-racism? Yes, thank you. So uh, there's lots of ways that the church has been engaged in anti-racism nationally. Uh, I'll, I'll talk maybe about this moment in time. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the history as well. Um, in this moment of time, uh, our anti-racism work is being guided by a national anti-racism action plan. And this is an action plan that was developed by one of our national committees called the Anti-Racism Common Table. And this plan names five broad theme areas. And the theme areas are education and awareness, theology, advocacy, governance, and healing and accountability. And then each of those areas has some very tangible goals to accompany them. Um, so very detailed goals that the, that the the committee worked on over time and then 
uh, kind of tested with people and went back and forth. So they so all of those are available and we can um, we'll share the link for that as well if you're interested in viewing that goal. So that action plan has been integrated into our overall strategic plan. And so we're working on that as a multi-year um, multi initiative. But I'll offer some really tangible examples of what that begins to look like. So under the, the theme area theology, uh, one, one way that this looks like is that we are working with a network of faculty from some of our United Church theological schools. So myself and the executive minister for leadership have been working with them over time. Um, and they are already doing some really amazing work. Um, and they are interested in continuing to deepen their anti-racism engagement in theological schools. So we gathered last year in person, um, and that work was actually supported by the foundation uh, to do that, and I'm thankful for that. Um, and uh, they'll regather again next month. Um, I noticed that there's a question wondering if I can repeat the areas of the plan, the five theme areas of the plan. I'll repeat them, and then we'll also send it out afterwards. So the five theme areas, um, one is education and awareness, a second is theology, a third is advocacy, a fourth is governance, and the fifth area is healing and accountability. Um, I've named them in a linear order just because it's a list, but it's not that you do one, uh, they're all kind of um, intertwined. <laughs> uh, so it's not that we do one and then move on to the other. So they're all intertwined, they're all being worked on at the same time in lots of different areas. Um, so. That's the action plan that's that's really guiding much of our national work. So we're looking at those goals and delving into them over time. So the example I was just offering around theology is one way that we are starting to work towards that goal around theology by working particularly with faculty, um, many of whom are already doing some amazing work and who are interested in continuing to network and also deepen their work. Um, another example is around governance. Um, collectively, we, a few of us in the United Church, worked to develop um, a, a kind of an EDA education, so equity, diversity, and anti-oppression education for national committee members. So all national committee, committee members were invited to uh, just engage in this educational process. It first involved uh, some online sessions um, where people had a chance to delve into different scenarios and um, and uh, kind of case studies, and then involved in meeting, uh, an in-person meeting with each committee. So the vast majority of committee members have engaged in this um, and noted that it was really helpful. Um, uh, in the evaluation of the training, people said that it helped them understand the United Church's work around equity, diversity, and anti-oppression, that it helped them understand how to apply it to their committee work, and that they're going to be very intentional about continuing to integrate this work into their committee's life afterwards. So um, that's another example. That's broader than anti-racism. It's a it's a, a key component, but it's, it's broader than anti-racism alone. I'll offer one more example of the theme of kind of what these themes might look like uh, under education. Um, uh, I would here I would name perhaps the forty days of engagement on anti-racism, which uh, for those of you who know me, I talk about this a lot because I'm so excited. I love this program, <laughs> um, but it's a forty-day program that runs in the fall, usually in the fall, um, and in the past has involved daily written reflections. Uh, it has in, included some um, video series where there's some key speakers who um, will offer some insights. There are suggestions of book resources um, and so on. Each of the written reflections involves education around um, a component of, of racism or anti-racism. Uh, it involves a faith reflection, theological reflection, the Bible study, and then some really practical ideas for action. So um, that is continues to be available, and uh, that's a really great way of doing education individually. Some people read it on their own as part of a devotion or a, a spiritual practice. Some people have been reading them in groups, uh, gathering together and talking about what are some insights. Um, so there's lots of ways of delving into that, but that is a really practical educational resource developed by um, all the writers for United Church people from the breadth of the United Church, um, offering their insights about a range of United Church, um, uh, a range of uh, understandings around racism. Those are just three examples. Um, there's a much longer list that I could keep talking about. I, mean, I could take the whole time talking about some of the, 
of national work that's happening, but there's lots of things happening. Um, and even as I name that, uh, that there's lots of national efforts and initiatives, I would also want to name really clearly that it it it's not enough. Um, and it will probably never be, it will never be enough. Um, you know, racism as a racism realistically is broad and deep and systemic. Um, and racial injustices go back centuries. So um, an education program will be helpful and is 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 a key component of that work. It won't undo all of the systemic injustice in the church and society, but it's still really important to do. So I I just want to hold that intention um, that there's a lot of positive work and gains that have been happening over time, um, and we can and do celebrate those. Um, and yet there's still more work to be done. Um, and I think that's why it's really important that anti-racism work kind of needs all of us. Uh, it needs all of us in our places and spaces and various ministry contexts to delve into this, um, collaborating and working towards our common goal of racial justice, racial, racial equity for all peoples. Um, because you know the efforts of one person or national efforts alone will never be enough. Collectively, this is our, our, our continued call um, to continue and deepen this work. Thank you. Yeah, I. It, it's again going back to that. It's hard work. It's ongoing work, and I I love that theme. Um, the fifth theme: healing and accountability. Just that reminder that it takes all of us, and there are going to be times when you're engaging as someone who might be healing from racial injustices, and there are going to be times when you might be on the accountability side and, and taking that on. And uh, I know, personally, I've really appreciated the 40 Days of Anti-Racism as a tool that helps me to engage in the, that multiplicity of sides and, and hearing the different perspectives. Thank you for, for sharing about those ways the church is engaging in anti-racism work. Um, so you, you we uh, mentioned it before, but can you give us some of the other very practical ideas and resources to follow up on them? whether or not it's for uh, small or large. Yes, great. Thank you, Jenna. So I'll, I'll name them visibly here, and um, we'll also send these out uh, afterwards as links uh, so that people can access them. Uh, so one, uh, we wrote this in anticipation of today, the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, is um, a resource uh, called 10 Additional Ways to Work Towards Anti-Racism. And it's additional ways because um, there was a list two years ago that was 10 ways. <laughs> and then people said, no, we want more. And so last year we wrote 10 more ways. And so now it's 10 additional ways. So <laughs> over the past three years, so now there are 30 ways. So um, so this list has really practical ideas, resources. Most of them are, are links to United Church resources, ideas. Um, so that's great. It's available. Um, you're welcome to share it, uh, you know, on social media, your church bulletin, post it on your church website. Um, really practical ideas and suggestions that people can take on both individually and as a group. Um, another idea, um, I would love to invite you, encourage you to gather people from your church and sign up for a new online series that's called Wait, Is This Racist? Um, it's also called, uh, or Co-Creating Anti-Racist Communities of Faith. This is gonna be also a very practical, um, course designed for teams from congregation, small teams, maybe three people or more, um, to work towards thinking about what anti-racism might look like in your own local context. It starts on April 22nd. Um, we're first session, we're meeting with the author of the book, um, who is going to come and share some insights. And then after that, we'll continue to do some work together over the next several months. Um, so that'll be a great resource uh, if you wanted to sign up for that. Um, and again, we'll send the link out uh, afterwards as well. Um, so please don't forget to encourage people to, uh, to engage in that. Uh, I already mentioned the 40 days, um, perhaps the 40 days of engagement on anti-racism. Perhaps I'll just highlight a couple of the video resources. So I mentioned there are, um, there are some online, um, there are online resources as well. Um, so there were seven in total. Uh, they're available on the United Church's YouTube channel. Um, two that were particularly popular was one was around environmental racism in Canada. Uh, it's a, a concept that um, sometimes people don't think about in the Canadian context, um, but is very real reality. Um, and the author of um, a book uh, focused on environmental racism um, was speaking and uh, also um, 
she has created a video uh, that's on Netflix where Elliot Page was uh, part of that uh, leadership team. So um, that was that's a great resource to look at. Another one that was really popular was Indigenous Identity in the Christian Church. So those are two among um, the whole series. Um, there was another one on Asian identity. So there's lots of resources there. So that's a, a great one. You can view that on your own if you'd like. Another practical resource, if um, if you are a young person or if there are young people in your life, uh, might be to um, download a new youth app. Um, this is was developed by United Church Young People, uh, and it's available on Google Play and on the Apple App Store. So a fun resource to learn more about anti-racism. Again, designed for and by youth, but really could be used by people of any age. And it's called Anti-Racism for Youth Training. Um, a couple more. Uh, so um, racial justice training is ongoing. Um, so if you're thinking, hmm, I really like to learn more and I'd like to learn more about ter terminology or I'd like to explore some of the theology behind our anti-racism work, um, the racial justice training is available on ChurchX and uh, it's expanded. So for quite some time, it's been mandatory for ministers across the church. Um, there's also additional now optional courses for white lay leaders um, and for, uh, as yeah, for anyone who's really interested in taking it. So that's available as a resource. And coming soon, uh, coming soon <laughs> is a brand new resource. It'll be out in the next couple of weeks. It's called I'm a Changemaker. And it's a resource on anti-racism for working with children. So teaching children. Uh, and this came about because people said, you know, we, we would love to explore um, talking about anti-racism in our Sunday schools. Uh, we don't know how, we we want love some resources, or we've got books that are from outside the church, we need something inside the church, so we developed one. Uh, it's coming out really soon. I'm a change maker. It will be on the United Church Bookstore, um, and there will be some additional supporting resources available at Church X. So you could um, be on the exploration, be on the lookout for that when it comes. Um, it's a six-session resource uh, and developed, again, by people in the United Church for young people in the United Church. So those are some practical ones. Uh, and again, we'll send out links to all of those. Those are wonderful. And yeah, I've been engaging a little bit with the, the app and uh, I've been looking forward to the I'm a change maker piece myself. So thank you for sharing those. And if you are following along in the chat, um, I believe that the foundation staff have been adding in some of those links as we've gone along. So you can already go and take a look at some of those resources. Well, we are coming up to the end of our time here. Um, I just want to thank you so much, Adele, for joining us here today and sharing your time and your insights and your wisdom and your experience with us all. Um, it's been wonderful just to get some of this kind of bigger picture of how this work is being done um, in communities of faith, as well as in the larger national church. And I just really want to uh, thank you. Thank you for giving us that time. You're very welcome. And thanks to everybody for being here for this coffee session. And thanks for your continued engagement in the work. It takes all of us. So thank you for responding to this call. Thank you.